Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here today, and today I'm going to be painting this loose watercolour woodland stream um, with the sunlight coming in through the gaps in the trees and lighting up the water as it makes its way through the sunlit trees. I'll be mostly using the wet in wet method for this painting. I'm using this photograph from Pixabay. I shall leave a link in the description below. Today I'm using Milford 100% cotton cold pressed paper. It's 140 pound or 300 GSM weight. It's 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres and it's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape um, and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees so gravity will help me paint. Here's my loose pencil sketch which just maps out the shape of the river, uh, the distant trees, the foliage and the mid-ground trees um, so that I can sort of see them as I paint. I'm going to be painting wet in wet to start with so the first thing I'll do is to wet my page all over but I'm not going to wet into the river area because I'm going to try to avoid that as I paint to start with and then slowly build it up. Um, so I'm keeping the white of the paper for the river to start with then I should just introduce a little bit of colour but keep a lot of that white for the uh, reflected sunlight on the water. Use any wash brush to wet your page. I'm using a Princeton Aqua Elite one and a half inch Mottler. So I'm going in to start with using the same brush and um, quite a weak mixture of lemon yellow. And then I'm adding in a bit of burnt sienna as well for that slightly warmer glow on some of the leaves in the photograph. I'm going to mix a green with the lemon yellow and for that I'm going to use ultramarine and I should be swapping around with these colours, plenty of water and avoiding um, that area in the distance around the mid, um, around above where the stream disappears off into the distance so that I can keep it as a really lovely light hazy glow of the sun sort of coming in through the trees. You can see I'm beginning to introduce the green now um, made from lemon yellow and a small touch of ultramarine and I can add a little bit more of the ultramarine or a little bit more of burnt sienna um, depending on the kind of um, hue of green that I want but I'm keeping this as light as I can and as fresh as I can while still trying to build up a little nice amount of um, variety in the hues just keeping the tones at the moment, mostly light and mid tones for this first layer. So I'm still just using the Mottler brush at the moment. It's really versatile, very much like a Harky brush, but this is a synthetic brush. You can see that I've dropped a bit more blue in there and that's just bringing us that sort of cooler, uh, more shady look, but then warming it up again by dipping into a little bit more of the lemon yellow so that I get that nice amount of variety and painting wet in wet, everything softly diffusing and blending on the page to give me a lovely base for my painting. Trying to really make the most of the transparent nature of watercolour here and keeping it nice and fresh and very clean colours. Just need to now build up a bit more shadow around the base of the riverbank on either side. So I'm dipping a little bit more into um, the burnt sienna and some raw umber. And then I'll add a bit more um, ultramarine blue to green it back up again. working fairly quickly so that I can keep working on the paper while it's still damp and then introducing some darker tones from the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue and a little touch of the yellow gives me these darker shadowy areas where we've got these um, rocks and stones 
um, in shade at, in the foreground um, on the river banks or stream banks. Again, I can use the tips of this very versatile brush just to um, indicate where the rocks are just crossing the stream from one side to the other. Um, and then I can wash my brush out, go back into the yellow and the green shades and start to um, just brighten some areas up a, a little bit, still keeping it nice and soft and avoiding that pale area in the middle, just to the right, where we've got our strongest light coming through the trees. So using a very light touch and just the corner and the tips of the Mottler brush just to establish some of these rocks and I have added a bit of Payne's Grey to my palette um, now that I'm actually beginning to strengthen up and go from mid-tones to slightly darker tones in areas where I, I want things to sort of soften and diffuse for this first wet in wet wash. And then just before the paint dries, I'm going to use the corner of a plastic store card and I'm scraping it through the rich paint and I'm creating highlights on the rocks and um, on either side of the bank in the foreground where we just want a little bit more suggested detail, something and nothing. Um, this can look really effective, um, but as long as it's not overdone. And then taking the cut corner of a card, I'm just scraping the edge through the wet paint. Well, it's only damp now, and it's just giving me um, a few lighter branches coming through the sides here and there, sort of following my pencil lines. And this will just give me a bit of extra texture and a bit of light um, once the washes have dried and then I can go back and add a few darker shadows underneath those rocks and maybe a little bit of um, dark shadows um, to the riverbank in places. And while I'm waiting for the rest of my foliage to dry I can continue to build up on these sort of rocky um, edges to the stream. Um, just a little touch here and there um, I can soften back with a clean, damp squirrel mop if I need to, if I've got any really hard edges, just to make sure things are nice and soft. And then I can also pull some dry brush carefully in, in horizontal uh, brush strokes. So the dry brush here is just skipping over the texture of the paper and giving me that lovely sparkle, but still leaving plenty of white paper. Now I need to leave it to dry completely. And so here it is, the painting has dried back a little bit lighter um, and now I'm going to continue work on the, um, the foliage areas, on the, on the trees to start with. So using a small ProArt sword liner and raw umber with a touch of burnt sienna in it, it's quite pale for these distant trees. I'm just following my pencil lines and adding in these slender trees in the mid-ground going off into the distance. I only want a few suggested tree trunks there. The sword liner is a really useful brush for this. It's got sort of long hairs that holds quite a lot of paint and water and so you can get some lovely brushwork and some really fine lines as the um, the hairs are tapered to a very fine point. If you don't have a sword liner, you can use any liner brush or a small calligraphy brush for this, but you'll probably have to sort of dip into your paint a little bit more often. I think that's the beauty of a sword liner is you can get most of the work done just with one brush load. So once I've placed my 
um, tree trunks and my branches and sticks and twigs etc um, I will then be painting over and around them to build up my wood. To do this I'm going to use my water spray and just spray around the foliage areas to re-wet the page because then I can then go in and paint wet in wet again on top of and around that original underpainting without disturbing it so I can just build up the next layer of foliage. And using the same colours as I used for the underpainting, um, swapping around um, from one to the other and different mixtures of them, but still with plenty of water, um, I'm building up this sunlit effect. Again, focusing on keeping the edges nice and bright and sunny. I'm using an Escoda size 14 um, synthetic mop brush for this and this is giving me these lovely foliage textures. Making sure I begin to build up those shadowy areas towards the front of the painting whilst keeping the back of the painting much lighter. So now it's basically a balancing act to finish off the painting, building up enough darks without overworking it um, and also scraping in a few more of these highlights by pushing the paint aside with the corner of the plastic card through the damp paint. Um, this also gives me texture. If it goes through very wet paint, it makes a little scratch and the paint pulls into it so I get a darker mark, again adding more texture. This is um, an Escoda um, size 10 synthetic mop brush. And again, adding in more darks into those damp areas, they will soften and diffuse. I can use a clean damp brush to soften back any marks that go in a little bit dark. And then swap back in with some beautiful um, golden lemon yellow. And if I need anything brighter than that, I can use a cad yellow, which is a warmer yellow, and that will bring even more brightness to my sunny areas. And then finally, back to the Mottler brush and this nice earthy um, raw umber with a, a touch of the green that I've mixed added to it, um, just to bring down those darks even more, but still to keep it quite fresh looking. And now for my water. This is a three quarter inch flat brush and I've mixed up a very watery mix of ultramarine blue, almost just like paint water. And you can see how pale it is. And I'm pulling that across from either side using this three quarter inch flat brush, still leaving um, a, a wide trail of unpainted paper. Um, and this should give me the effect of my stream um, sort of reflecting a little bit of the sky that we can't see, but with the sun coming in and making the water sparkle beautifully. When we've got moving water like this, tumbling over these rocks, as we have with this stream, we don't have to worry about reflections too much. Just a few shadows here and there is all that we need. This is um, a stiff bristled stippling brush and I'm just stippling in some of the lemon yellow and cad yellow here and there very lightly, almost dry brushing it here and there. Um, if you use too wet a brush with a stippling brush, you won't get the effects that you're looking for. Um, and I just want it to just increase the tone um, of my highlights. And then back to this Payne's Grey and now increasing the tone of my low lights. So my darkest darks, the shadows underneath my rocks and some shadows underneath the foreground foliage are becoming a little bit stronger and more defined using the Payne's Grey. So 
So I'm using my three quarter inch flat brush for this and mostly just using the tips and the corner. I'm trying to make sure that there's more detail and intensity of colour and tone in the foreground. Um, and then as you look further back into the painting, uh, there's less darks and there's less uh, dark tones. There's more mid and pale tones. And that hopefully will give us the look of depth and distance as we look sort of into the patch of sunlight in the distance that's been created by that very sort of misty, unpainted, pale yellow area in the distance. So now it's a matter of stepping back and having a look at the painting and seeing what it needs. And I think just a bit more cad yellow here and there um, around the edges of this sort of foreground area of bushes and shrubs. It'll dry back a bit lighter. If it's too dark, I can knock it back while it's dry, uh, wet with a tissue again. Uh, but it will just give me that little bit more intensity to my fore and mid ground foliage canopies. So I'm going to call that finished. It would be really easy to get carried away and to add too much detail. And of course, this, this is a loose painting where we want the detail to be suggested and not too overt. So I'm going to remove the tape and seeing the painting with a clean white border always helps us to see it with fresh eyes because it looks more finished somehow, almost as if it was in a frame. So I think this has turned out quite effectively for a loose painting and a quick recap of the colours. Um, I used lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, raw umber, a little bit of Payne's grey and a bit of um, cad yellow at the end to add that sort of golden glow um, to the sunlit foliage. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed painting it. And if you did, please um, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, as that really helps with our reach. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. Um, you could subscribe to my Patreon uh, by following the link below. And there's also a link to subscribe to Morgana's Patreon as well for lots of wonderful exclusive videos. So I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.